All right, welcome back to the True Geordie podcast. Today's guest is Ben Foster. All right, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Nice uh, to meet you, Ben. Uh, we had a good little chat before this, and I'm really excited to talk to you today because I discovered your book recently, and um, I haven't read loads of it because I was like, I've got to talk to this guy. Like, I've, <laughs> I want this to be sort of like fresh. But on the back of the book, the title is Gigolo. Yes. And some people may or may not know what that means. Uh, Broadly speaking, it means... Male prostitute. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like something that I'm not really hit with on a day-to-day -day basis, so obviously my eyes are, were drawn to it. And on the back of the book, it says, um, Ben qualifies as a masseur and is uh, introduced to the, uh, a mysterious committee, which was a group of society women with one big thing in common. They adore sex and don't mind paying for it. <laughs> you were a care worker who was drawn into a world of private jets, sex clubs, um, state secrets, endless lines of cocaine, orgies in country houses with a who's who of celebrities, MPs, and the international super rich. Yes. That wow. is me. <laughs> <laughs> and and yet you come across as such a normal bloke. Um, but then when I started talking to you, I immediately understood what women would enjoy about you, which is that you okay. are a very caring person. Yes. And that really comes across that you're not a judgmental person, you make people feel very comfortable. And in my experience with women, that's the best way to go. Definitely, definitely. So I guess we should try and, and take a little time machine back to the start, mate, of, you know, how did this sort of begin? I started my career off in the fishing trawlers, which is completely far away, as far away as you can get from sports therapy and things like that at all. Uh -huh. And found a, a sports therapy course, I went on to that. And to cut all the grey bits out, I moved away, we moved to London, and I started working at an exclusive spa retreat. This is where I met a lot of people, um, obviously the A-list celebrities and the TV personalities and things like that. And that was obviously legit and stuff. Um, then I worked also for a little bit of part-time for extra money in the gym. And while I was in the gym, I got approached by, let's say, uh, a part of the royal family, mentioning no names. Um, was that female or male? That was a male. Mm. And he basically said, do you do private treatments? You know, I'm not really keen on coming here and stuff like that. So basically we arranged to meet and uh, um, the first time I drove up there was this big stately home in the Cotswolds of all places. While I was there, uh, the mother of this gentleman basically took an eye to me and within five minutes I was meeting the whole committee of ladies, as I like to call them, um, and being provided around a room with like pictures that are probably worth more than my my whole house is worth, you know, and things like that. So, what was the first time someone suggested that this was more than a massage? Uh, the first time I kind of got roped into it. Um, I was it was the mother of the person that I was seeing. She basically gave me a mobile phone, uh, and on this mobile phone was one number, my number, and the committee's numbers. So they'd text me at any time they wanted, and I would go and be whatever they wanted me to be on that occasion, whether it was a dinner, a dance, or literally just sex. Um, I basically got invited to do a treatment for the mother. And while I was there, at the time I was driving, the oldest bang you could ever wish for in your life. You know, I'm humble beginning. Less about the mother, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. No, 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 please, carry on. <laughs> you can get away with that, I can't, yeah. you know. Um, so, cut another story short, when, when I went there, next thing you know, my, my car broke down, I couldn't start it. And I had to stay in this stately home for the night. Okay. I laid there. It was, I suppose it was about half past 11 at night. We'd, we'd had drinks and chats. She'd had her massage. Fantastic, beautiful figure, beautiful lady. They all are, you know. Um, next thing you know, there she stood at the bottom of my bed. White satin sort of silk thing she had on. I still remember to this day. And she just dropped it off and stood there completely naked. Uh, the confidence was something that I wasn't used to at the time because most of the girls I've been with would cover up and hide yeah. and not, you're not, not too confident. So it's well, I mean, if you're in your early 20s, women in their early 20s naturally are going to be less confident. Um, and I'm assuming because she was in a, p a position of authority, she's like, well, I don't really care if you judge me or not. You're here to, to be used, essentially. Yes, yes. So can you remember specifics and, and, and would you share a little bit of like, I don't know, how she was and, and that sort of stuff? Because it is, this is so unusual to hear. Yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, brown, brunette. Brown eyes, mm. lovely sort of tan skin, uh, you know, the, the, the olive sort of skin. Um, as far as the sexual side of things, basically she implemented and started off by uh, oral, 
mm. um, kissing and things like that, and just relax. I mean, to be honest with you, in the back of my mind was thinking, well, where's your husband? Where you know, where, is he going to burst in any minute now? Or yeah. you know, I've, I've seen a few things in my life, as you know, being yeah. a diver, you know. Um, and at that point, it kind of went from you know her on top, and then it was doggy, and then before you know it, we were by the window. The windows were open, the grates <laughs> were open, the booze were by the you know. They were even, there's probably still the imprint is still on the glass. To be probably honest with you, and that that was all down to me. Um, the treatment, the massage itself, like I said, we've done the treatment in a fireplace and this is where I thought that would have happened but it didn't and then later on... Did she make any suggestions during that or any movements? Because you know how, like, I, I mean, you could only imagine that sometimes women would position things in a certain way if they want you to touch certain areas but yes. that never happened? No, it was, it was, I felt like I was being interviewed. It was more questions. Where are you from? What did you do? Where did yeah. you come from? And all this sort of thing and, and, and each time she's gone, hmm... And I could think, now I look at it now, I think in the back of my mind, she's thinking, I'm going to ruin you later. You know, you're yeah. obviously young, like I said, so for her, it's probably yeah. a, a good thing. Um, <laughs> but um, I kind of, if you pardon the pun, fell into it without even realising. Before you know it, like I said, I had a car, I had a phone, I was going around to all these women after work, after a full day's work and in between work. It was like dinner break, quick, we can, you know, go and do this. It was, I got addicted to it as well. Again, me being the person that I am, and it's like I say to my clients now, um, you know, I'm, I know what I can do and I know what I'm capable of. So I'll let you give me what you think I'm worth. That was one of my most, most favourite sayings. I know it sounds crazy. It's never about the money. I've never been money orientated. I think everything I've done was done on a physical, mental, and emotional level, and obviously spiritual level. Everything I do is, is you know, if I talk to someone, give a treatment, everything's got to be covered. It can't just be like, oh, you're, you're physically sorted out, because the person might be there just want to chat, so to speak. Uh -huh. Nine times out of ten, um, let's say nine times out of ten, let's say four times out of ten, the lady would be in tears after the act because her emotions have gone wild. We know that ladies are completely different. Their they're chemicals in their body, when a man makes love to a woman, is very emotional. That means they're attached to you. Based on what it says on the book, just, just so that people understand, with his dark hair, blue eyes, and robust appendage that the ladies dub Big Ben. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's not a bad CV. No, 100% it isn't. And obviously that attracts all the wrong people. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, there's been times where I've been in a lady's company and she has literally just thrown it on the plate for me and I've said, no, if you get your coat on, I'll take you home. And because that's my moral side of things, that's not, you know, for them, I suppose it's just a sake of saying I slept with Ben Foster, I, oh. you know, and for me, it's like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'd, I'd rather sit and have a conversation with you. That side of things for me, there's only one room in the house that I'll ever be in command of, and that is the bedroom. When it comes to any relationship, the lady has the room of the house, she does everything she wants, but that room is my room. I get to say what happens in there. Uh -huh. And I think that's the thing as well with relationships. I mean, I've been married myself, <laughs> and you know, it, you, you look at your partner, and she's the one. She's the one for you. You don't look, look at anything else, and you, you know, you kind of get into it, but you can't look at that partner anymore. Is that person you want to forgive me for saying it like this, but ruin, you want to fuck her brains out, not being rude enough, and you want to have the best night of your life with your partner, but you've got so much respect for this girl that you can't see her like that. You've made a very interesting conversational point there because there's a, there's a phrase that a couple of my mates have used in the past called putting the pussy on a pedestal. Yes. And once you start yes. looking at her in a certain way where you have a lot of respect for her then the, the 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 feeling of wanting to dominate her or to you know as you ruin her like those, some of those urges can change because for for some of my mates when we've had those conversations specifically when they become the mother of their children yes you when a woman gives you a child and and you know you you look at her in a in a, in a way that's like Almost, uh, you know, you kind of look at her as a mother figure. A miracle. Yeah, yeah. you, you look miracle. at her as a mother figure. Not necessarily your mother, but a, a, but a figure of respect. That's and, right, yeah. Uh, you know, you yes. adore that. So then think of her like the porn star. There we go. Yeah. It's, def it's difficult, because women have to be so many different things to a man. 100%, mm. and it's all up here. Uh, you know, and as for a man, as you get older, it's all up here. Yeah. You know, you can think what's going on down here when you're young. While you're young, enjoy it. That's all I'm going to say. Because as you get older, you'll start to think to yourself, actually, I've got to pick up some bread on the way home. <laughs> to pick, you know, and you start to think, I'm, I'm in the middle of this, and why is my head going to a bread that I've got to pick up from a shop? It drives me nuts. Yeah. And it is just old That's age. That's responsibility, bro. <laughs> is, when, yeah. when you're young, dumb, and full of cum, things are a lot, <laughs> a lot easier. And as you say... Um, you're fully loaded and, the, and these women are wanting to feel that exhilaration that they used to feel when they were young yes, women. Yeah. And, and this is different because of the age of some of the girls. Uh, but I look at the Jeffrey Epstein story where 
he was being re receiving massages from young women, yes. and then it would go from that to sex. When you look at your story, high society, you know, women of power, yes. and you being a young wet behind the ears man, it's not that dissimilar. No. No, and right. I just don't know if you were of, of, of a mental age where you were able to really understand what was happening there. Definitely not. I mean, like I said, I was still young, and you know, like you said, young, young, dumb, and full of cum. At the same side of things as well, it was also mentioned to me on numerous occasions that they could destroy me if they wanted to. Obviously, with the information. Well, then there's definitely sex trafficking because yeah. because you're being coerced with threats of of whatever can happen because these are extremely powerful people. I thought they just made me disappear. To be honest with you, that yeah. was honestly and like like I said, this was the part where up here I struggled for a lot of years because it was like, oh God, there was going to be a red dot on me any time. Now you, your brain goes off on one, doesn't it? You you look at films and you think, <laughs> am I the next victim? But it was just a gentle reminder. It was very subtle. In other words, what we've got on you could destroy you as much as it could us. Um, you know, there weren't no phones allowed in the room. You know, we were searched, things like that. There, and I wasn't the only person that was being paid to be there. There was lots of people. There was young ladies there. There was also young men there. What, what do you think the youngest person you've seen was? I think the youngest, I'd, I'd say, would, would probably be between 17 and 18. Uh, you know, I couldn't safely say. I think any, if there was anything like that going on in the other rooms, then I'd have been kept well away from it. I mean, these guys protect themselves for a reason. It seems these days they don't need to. They can pretty much do what they want and mm. say, yeah, we're going to do it anyway. And th looking back at the the accusations that have been made about certain members of the royal family, mm. has, has, has did that raise any eyebrows with you or were you just like, oh, yep? Yeah. I, I knew, and this is the thing, I would sit there with colleagues and stuff and they'd come on the telly and things like that and I'd be sitting there thinking, who'd believe me? If I sat here now and I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, you know, I've seen you uh -huh. in, a, in a situation where you've been wearing a nappy and someone's been chasing you around with a dummy, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people ask me to put them in a cage uh -huh. and just leave them there for an hour and abuse them, chuck some water on them and stuff and they pay you for that. I mean, that's just ridiculous. It's like... But each to their own, you know. If you want to identify as a raindrop, you go ahead. That's up to you. Well, you know, I'm quite happy being me, so to speak. So. And how often did it get weird like that with uh, these people? I think it's the boredom factor. They've got all this money and all this time and nothing to do, so it's kind of like they search out for the fast cars and the crazy things. That's why a lot of celebrities go off the rails, I believe, because they get bored. They, they want something to do. They've had the money. They've yeah. got to the top. What's next? I mean, there was, there was one occasion that gentleman... You know, very, very important person, that's all I'm going to say. It has a lot to do with the law. And he offered me literally £3,000 to spend the night with him. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I was just, just females only. I felt a little bit pressured because I was a bit like, right, well, you can stay over there now, mate, do you know what I mean? That's the weird, I've made He's a very point. powerful man as well. Yes, well, more upset him, put it that way. I'm, you know, it's the biggest gang in the company, let's just say that. Uh -huh. um, cut a long story short, the, the sum went up to £10,000. And I still said no, obviously, for all the right reasons. And, you know, that's just something that I couldn't do. That's not for me. It, it, it doesn't float my boat. So cleverly, one of the ladies took me to the room and he sat there and watched. When a gentleman, you know, you've got a lady bent over, so to speak, and you're, you're doing your business and everything like that, um, he comes up and he tries to touch your ass, so to speak, and there's me, but what are you doing, mate? Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not like that. You know, that was a big issue a lot because, uh, let's be honest, there's more men out there that would go for the services than there is a women. I mean... That's the hardest thing. A lot of women have said to me in the past, I can't understand why someone would pay for it. So I've said to them, you come out for a night with me and you, after the night, you tell me whether I'm worth it or not. And a little bit's for my own ego, you know. It is holding my hands up every time. Yeah, completely different to what I used to. The one thing they say to me is, I'm doomed. And I say, why is that? And they say, because I'm never going to find someone that's done what you've just done to me. In that, what is it that you think makes your experience with a woman that much different to a normal guy? Simply the fact of taking your time. You know, take your time and read the woman. A lot of people, they go rushing into these things, quick, wham, bam, you know, let's do this, let's do that, watch a porn film, make a porn No, 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 no. Get on them on a mental level, first of all. If you get in their head first and then, you know, ease your way into them, then it's like an envelope that's opening up for you without sounding or, you know, using that as a pun. It's kind of terrible. But at the same time, I'm not so much interested in their boobs or their bum and what their body can do. The flashes in my head, believe it or not, go while I'm talking to them, I can see them having a great time. 
Um, and then after that, they start to look at it as if to say, you're nice. They let their barriers down, so to speak. And that's not, you know, it's not a game. It's not, I'm not trying to, you know, they've got me there. Before you know it, they've said at the end of it, I didn't know what to expect, but it's one of the best experiences of my life. Thank you very much. Some of them cry and say, I needed that. I just needed that release. I've, yeah. I was in a marriage where the man just made me feel ugly. Yeah. We all, we've, all, we've all been there, haven't we? So, well, I think there's a lot of that that goes on from speaking to women who uh, have had those sort of crappy experiences. Um, I mean, I mentioned this, uh, but I think being raised by a, a mother I was I was very close with my mother yes. give me a, a, a big help when it comes to speaking to women one on one because all I was used to was speaking to a woman one on one my whole life you know yes. and yeah. I think that there's a definite lot of truth in what you're saying in that as men mm. we are just programmed so differently yes. to women because yeah. we are physical visceral creatures that you know at our base level are kind of protect us and shag us yes. it's, it's no one's fault that we're programmed differently. And it is just about, like, as a man, fight. we're having to fight urges yes. to give a woman that level of experience because we do just want to rip clothes off and look at the boobs. Yeah, uh, but, and all the pressure's on us as well. It, all oh, the yeah, pressure's on the man. It, it, one, there's <laughs> times where you, you'll finish having sex and you're like, fuck me, I'm not going to and, and And whereas, you know, you look at a woman and they're absolutely fine. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, your ass hasn't been gone back for <laughs> fucking an hour. So... You know, and and equally, if if it doesn't go so well, it's on our. You know, if yes. if, if for a man, if you uh, if it's a bit too quick or, or whatever, you know, I, I do feel like women, um, but also I think a woman's pressure is more of a mental pressure. Yes. Uh, uh, from my understanding, they are, they're often worried about how they look, or am I doing this right, or yes. you know, is this how you you know? Yeah. Um, but I think. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in what you're saying about making a woman feel like the barriers come down because yes. I think only then can a woman actually come hard. Yes, <laughs> just, be herself, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, and this, this is the thing. that is uh, it, it, it kind of gets to me because, you know, this is what we were saying about earlier with the husband and wife thing. Mm. I mean, if you could spice that up a bit, it would, it would save so many relationships. On the same side of things with the woman, like, you know, she's... She's got an expectation of herself and you're just enforcing that expectation. You know, I mean, the amount of times I say, you got the best thing, a, a recent sort of thing in the last year, the girls have come to me and I've said, do you feel confident enough to get undressed in front of me? And they're like, yeah, I suppose so, because it's you. And I'm like, well, go on then. So they do. And I say, no, look at you. Look at your body. Look at your curves. Look at your breasts. You're gorgeous. You're absolutely amazing. And I mean it. I do mean it, Brian. They are. Women's body to me is... Wow, this is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I feel like that's a little thing that we can do as men yeah. regularly to just make them feel good. Yes. That doesn't take any... It's not like you're buying flowers, chocolates. You don't have to go anywhere. Just hype her up yes. and make her feel great. Yeah. If she feels great, yeah. she is going to be way more confident and you're going to get way better sex. That's exactly right. And this is the other thing I'll say to any woman that's with me, and they all know the same thing, you have to be confident. If you're not going to be confident in that room, then the things that, you know, I want you to know that you are the most precious, most beautiful object in the world when you're with me. And I will show you that. And the other thing is, don't leave any inch untouched. Take your time. Suck the toes. Play with the feet. You know, go for the inner thighs. Go for the back of the neck. Yes, bro. There's no hurry, yeah. you know. People panic, and you know, a lot of friends ask me, how do you do it? And I say, do you know the difference between me and you? And they go, well, I go, you're trying to get in her niggas. I'm not. I'm trying to get in her mind. Because for me, that's where the attraction is. After so much sex and being able to just, does anyone fancy a bit of fun? At any time I want, it's a bit like, well, now I want something more. You know, I, I want something, that's, a girl that's going to last with me, look me in the eye and say, yes, I'm with you, I understand. Like I said, four hours later, we've, everyone's very happy. But again, <laughs> and you know, and, and the other I'm thing I'm not is, sure about the four hours, bro. That's a bit, that's a long one for me. Like, <laughs> okay. I think, I think, honestly, it's been about six and a half hours. I think it was the longest I've, I've gone. There has been a 24 hour thing, but that's been on and off and, you know, in between. Cup of tea. Yeah, exactly. If I had a cup of tea, <laughs> cigarette, I've got to say, we're middle class, not lower People class. People know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that's my one voice. Um, but uh, literally, it is. And the aftercare as well. I mean, you know, sitting there once the lady's finished and you're finished, and just gently stroke her, grab her hair, look in her eyes. You know, there's a time you don't have to look in a girl's eyes every time you. You, you know, you want to make love to her, just stop and stop in the middle of sex and look at her and say, look at me. 
there you'll see what that real person is. There's the fire, there's the spiritual side. Mm. Each stroke is is completely different to like some, you know, it's it's like, actually, I mean this. I do care enough about you and I do want you to enjoy yourself and I want you to feel so amazing after this. Again, all the pressure's off for me. Bro, yeah. <sighs> This is a really beneficial podcast for young lads out there, especially yes. because, in not not saying I'm an expert, but you know, in my I, you know, I've been fortunate that you women have wanted to spend yeah. time with me, and I've I've and I'm sure, you know, I've let some women down in the past, and I've been <laughs> pissed and all of this sort of stuff. But ultimately, the best experiences are when you make them feel like they matter for sure. And that's when a woman develops an attachment to you yes. and when she's really willing to go beyond any boundary, any kink. Yeah. That once they feel comfortable and they trust you and they're like, this man is never going to make trust. me feel ugly, you know, it's, you're levelling up. And another, like you've kind of already put it, uh, I, I, it's like, you know... You're talking about reviews almost. Like, it's, you want a woman to look at you like, I'd go back there for a meal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when the world get around. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to, you know, serve a, a, a bad performance out. And, 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 um, and I think that focusing on what they're getting out of the experience yes. is the key. Because yeah. as a man, yeah. I personally think it's easy for us to be pleased. It is. It's it, so it, easy. It can be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bit, you know, I'm, I'm kind of not being really accepting to the rule, obviously, because of what I do, I have to make them happy. But, but, but even even for me as a normal guy who doesn't do this as, as a living and is just wanting to please a woman, yes. I just think focusing on her for a good amount of time at the beginning, at the very and, and just... Listen. Yeah, yeah, and and go go through those um, those motions with her to, to focus uh, because for me I, I know people make silly jokes about this because whenever you talk about sex in public it's yeah. a bit of a oh how funny but yeah. let's be mature here mm. focus on making the woman happy to start with in my yes. opinion is yeah. always a good route definitely definitely then after that it's just a, everything's just a bonus oh yeah I'm, after that I'm doing a victory lap and it's it's you know what I'm no, saying it, exactly yeah I'm, it's a tap in basically <laughs> yeah, it is. you it know is. because as men it is you know in and out very fast usually you'll do the trick at any point the hardest thing as well I think for a lot of women to admit is they like to be excuse my French when I say this but you know but they, they do a woman likes to be Taking control of, absolutely. You know, being t there's the man, there's the woman. That's the object we play in the, in the bedroom. Not for everyone. Sometimes we'll swap roles. You know, it, it can go the other way. But at the same time, for a man, it's kind of like you know, you just want to make them feel good. You want to make them feel but, amazing. But, but almost to, to our, I guess, to our uh, detriment because you kind of want to build up to that point. Whereas as a man, we're ready 100 mile an hour from the get-go. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I definitely think that this is healthy that younger, younger men mm -hmm. can hear that of yeah. build up to it, lads. Like, yeah. as you say, don't leave any um, inch unturned. Uh, no, 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 no. Focus all over. Don't rush. <laughs> yeah. And, and that is the thing. You take your time. You just don't put no pressure on yourself. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're only human. You've got the same as everyone else has got. We're all different sizes, different colours and God knows what. But... It, and it doesn't mean about the size or anything like that. I mean, I'm lucky, but at the same time, it, it doesn't mean nothing about that at all. That one touch could do it. You know, in the right environment, the right words, whisper in the ear, you look absolutely magnificent. Now I'm going to devour you. <laughs> I'm going to eat you. <laughs> you know? I'm his. I'm his. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 see what, you look know, right in my eyes when you I did, that. yeah, sorry. I can see why this works. There was, exactly, there's a moment there. <laughs> But this is the thing, and, and, and by hiding yes. about, you know, sex and things like that, it's not doing the youngsters any favours. Mm. My second book is literally based on the simple fact of like, okay, the aftermath of Gigolo. The aftermath of how people have changed, how people have seen it, what's happened with the female side of things. You know, for instance, there was an issue a few years ago where, you know, a certain couple of people tried to come and get me because of the T-Mob, and they turned up at my door with bad intentions. Me being me was polite, you know. I said, well, what, what is all this about? Well, I don't, you know, I don't... Because know. of your book? Yeah, basically, and upsetting women. And, of course, I've, I've turned them down, so they don't like it. Like you say, they get very nasty about it. Wow. Before you know it, he hit me, he pushed me, he done this, he done that. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't do any of that. Do you know Do you know what I mean, so to speak? Okay, so you, just, just to backtrack, <coughs> yeah. You were in a scenario where you've rejected a woman based on your reputation. She yeah. wanted to sample the gigolo. Yes. And yeah. you politely declined, <laughs> yeah. and in which case she didn't 
take that so well and accused you to certain people yeah. and they came looking for you. Oh, t- she was threats and all sorts. Was, she was getting all her groups of friends to try and go out with me and things like this. And I was like, you've all got the wrong idea. Basically, I turned it down and she didn't like it. Mm. And the reason I turned it down is because I said the same thing as what I said to a young girl about, uh, well, three nights ago. You know, do yourself a favour. I can't give you what, what you want. I can't give you that relationship, the marriage and everything else like that. I can give you a bit of fun. I can make your life seem better and stuff like that. That's not a problem. But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to, you know, this is the other thing. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take you out. And I'm going to... Don't lie to someone. Just tell them the truth. If it's a bit of fun, it's a bit of fun. If it isn't, it isn't, you know. I must admit, years later, she texts me and says, I'm so sorry. And she apologised to me and said I was out of line. I was out of order. I was in a very dark place. And going back to this, this committee... Yes. And you mentioned before about um, being kind of afraid of, of, of the potential consequences. I mean, you've never named those people specifically. No, no there's good reason for that. I'm, I'm not one for name and shaming. If they were in the room here now with me, then fair enough, I'd go at it with them. That's not a problem. But they're not, and they never will be. Secondly, I think it was the case of once you'd done that first deed, that first night, that's what the very intelligent lady was there for, to set up that scenario, get me entrapped, entrapped me, basically. Then at that point, they've got me. I know um, people like David Icke have told... I don't know if you're familiar with David Icke. No, uh, but he, he's Sorry. a conspiracy theorist. But, okay. but he often talks about how the elite um, basically bring each other into the, tr- the circle of trust. Yes. And it's often by getting them to commit a deed that is a shameful act yes. in front of certain members. And it's almost then like, oh, you're initiated now. Yeah. We, we have you. And it does feel like a little bit of what you were subjected to as a young man was very much kind of like that, where, well, you can't just go running no. out now. Uh, and if you do get trusted in there, then they're very, very clever and very smart on making you feel like you're a part of them and then all of a sudden just disbanding you. And that's the bit that, you know, kind of like as a therapist, you get it, you get you become very friendly with some people, clients, and next thing you know, they, they haven't got the money anymore. Okay, so you mentioned about a man who wanted your services. Yes. Have you ever had anything with a man? And, and not that there'd be any judgment, nor should there be, but... No, not at all. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been in groups of 100 people, oh God, if not more, that have all been naked, all in the same room. So there's definitely something that's happened. That I don't, sometimes the light has been off, and I don't even know if it's a woman's hand or a man's hand that's grabbed it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I can't say yes or no. What about this 100 people thing? What the hell are you? What the hell happened there? That was the party um, when the mask, when the mask balls now. Usually what happens in these parties this is the thing you see the front of it and you see what goes on in separate rooms and stuff but some of these rooms have been done up with like glory holes and all sorts and there was this one place I went to that had different rooms and different genres of sex going on some were tied up you know everything it opened your eyes and there was a dark room where you walked in and anything went now that was the room like I said where it was about 100 people that felt like 100 people there's a door open you kind of get a glimpse of all these naked bodies I remember being there for about half an hour, literally, with the person that I was with, and we had a bit of fun, and then we went off on our own and done our own thing. But at the same time, once you've been in that environment where there's a hundred people, and that's a guess, there could have been more, you know. Uh, Are we talking like eyes wide shut masks? Kind of sort of thing, yeah. And it's the, yeah, the, the mask ball where they all turn up the mask yeah. on, and you don't know who it is. And everyone's and just like shagging with the mask on. Basically, yeah. What was it like for you going from the first time, I suppose, where people were watching you, or did that uh, did that help, or did it bother you? Or I'm not going to lie to you. Inside, I was all the while. You know, I sat there and I was thinking, oh god, I don't know. But again, I was young. You know, I don't know. What, I'm a different man now. If they put me in that situation, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, let's go for it. And I only live once. Who cares? Um, but afterwards, this is the point. It was amazing. It was just an experience and a half where I was allowed to lay back and let all these things happen. Uh. And, you know, it was the hand. I was just, I was in my awe. And the thing is, after the fact, this is the thing, you know as well as what I do, once a man's finished, that's when the thought's come in. Oh, you, like, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> so after the fact, I was a bit like, oh my God, I'm disgusting. So I went to the shower. I showered, I was stood in the shower for about 20 minutes, scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. I found that a lot of people have got their own motives, their own intentions, they're there to, for something, not for anything else. Now, the one thing I learned with the other side, the Olympians, as I call them, the committee, is leverage. You, with leverage, you don't have to raise a finger. You don't have to raise a fist. You don't have to phone the police. If you've got leverage on someone, <laughs> they're in your pocket for the rest of it. And that is the one thing that they taught me more than anything. 
And I've put it to the test and it does work. You're right. If you get leverage on someone and whisper in their ear, behave yourself, they soon step back. What kind of leverage did you notice these rich people had on other people and how did they exercise that power? The little things you'd hear about some of the MPs, like, you know, you'd have the Labour over there, the Conservative over there, and the rest of them doing their own bits. And you could you can tell who they're, and the bankers, the wolf pack, as I used to call them, they were a completely different breed. You know, completely different breed. How did they all differ? Well, this is the thing. The, the difference was all about the money. Did the, you ever hear them talking about, like, serious politics and that? Yeah, a couple of times. There was a couple of things, especially when it was, um, I mean, at the time we had a lot going on in Iraq and stuff like that. And that scared me because, again, they were talking about things that were happening, like, you know, without going too much into details, about military operations that were mm. going on. And I was a bit like... I don't really want to know this. Ignorance is bliss. So for you to get to a scenario where you're seeing someone who's very powerful dressed as a baby um, <laughs> and you're throwing water on them or whatever was going on, you must have been quite involved with a lot of the guys as well as the, as the wives. There was a group of gentlemen sitting in the back and I know for a fact one of them was an MP. And there was also a cabinet minister there. And, you know, jolly good, yes, give her a good jolly good go of seeing too. It'll save me fucking doing it tonight. Like, take the dogs for a walk. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, great. So I'm going to give, you know, and you can take the dogs for a walk. Fantastic. You know, that's what, you imagine what's going through my head at the time. Right? I'm like, okay, she's naked on the couch. You're all sitting there having a conversation about what's going on in the world or God knows what. But I soon learned to switch off. Well, you could have went to the newspapers if you want. I could have done. I could have gone at any time. And, you know, there was a few publishers uh, that come out that were obviously in these mix of people that said, I'll publish your book tomorrow if you write it. And I said, well, actually, I do write books. I've been writing since I was a kid. I love writing. This is fantastic. I've got fa f fantasy novels, fictional ones. I mean, I've tried to stay away from my own life, but that's all they cared about. They wanted the nitty-gritty. And then it wasn't until years later when I started to think, actually, I've got nothing. You know, I got, I'm working my ass off. My kids have got nothing. You know, I, I want something in this life to say that I was here at this time. And after what I've witnessed, I think that's only fair for people to know the truth. And the truth is, they don't care. We're just a number. Knowing like, how um, amazing the story is mm -hmm. to people listening at home and knowing that you're also written other books, there will be people who are sceptical of the story. You haven't named of people. Course. There will be people who think, well, he was a writer, is he embellishing in his own story? Um, what do you say to that? I mean, you know, you never believe everything you hear. And you never believe it unless you see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. But, I mean, the book is embellished. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, it was wrote for a film's sake or a series in a sense, oh. you know. And like I said, I've got a spade a spade. I've got nothing to hide. You said the book is embellished. Yeah, it is. It is. I think every book is. Obviously, where the ghostwriter involved. So they tried to throw the scent of where I was, what I was doing. So it allowed them to play with the truth a little bit. Yeah. For me, it was as long as you get the main core of the story and what happened in those parties, I don't care what you write. For me, I just want people to see what went on behind these closed doors. Uh -huh. So what level of drug use did you witness? Cocaine it was a massive thing. It was mainly cocaine. Huge amounts or...? Oh, yeah, like a pile. Let's just say really? a pile on the table, yeah. But that ain't just the one pile. And it is... I just hope that, you know, that they read the core of the story and know in their heart of hearts every rule and law that these guys make for us is broken by themselves. Especially after what you went through, because I assume there were periods where you didn't feel great about yourself. You may have feel used, and and I'm, I mean, I'm assuming there will be people watching now who may have a, a problem with you know your line of work mm. because I know I mean I don't know how it differs from men to women. I, I, I guess you may have spoken to some women, but you know, as a male prostitute. How did that impact you mentally and how did that make you feel? You become a loner. You don't really have many friends because of what you're doing. You know, you, you know the phone's ringing and you're off you go. You can't explain that. Um, you detach yourself from society in a sense and you live in your own little bubble. Um, the other times I come home and some of the things I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy doing it at all. I'd come home, like I said, I'd be in the shower and I would be washing and my friends are time a bit of a clean freak. Everything, you know, clean, right. clean, clean. Was that as a, as, a, as a mental thing as much as physical? It's mental thing, yeah. And and for me, it was it was like three times. I have to do it in the shower three times. Wow. Everything, wash, 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 wash. Make sure everything's clean. Kind of like less. OCD vibes. Can't smell. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting naked with these people. I have to smell pristine. Every inch of me has to smell good. What were the things that made you particularly? Uh, 
I guess, feel like you had to scrub yourself down that much? Like, were there certain things? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you've got kids in the family at the time and nieces and nephews, uh, I'd kiss them on the cheek and stuff, you know, and I wouldn't let them, and they didn't even come and kiss me, or, you know, I'd wash my hands constantly before I touched them or picked them up because... I've been doing things, obviously, sexual-wise, and was covered in God knows what, you know, so... Really? So it wasn't necessarily the act, it was more what you were then going to do after the act, or was it the act as well? The, the act was sometimes, I mean, there was one occasion where I got wrapped up in cling film and covered in baby oil, and my appendage was the only thing that was sticking out. And, <laughs> I, honestly... Wow, that's mad. Yeah, and, and, and I'm like, I said, OK, where are we going now? Have we got the morgue or something? You know, we can imagine what's going on in the back of my head, you know, like you say, you know. Was this, was this her thing? Oh, she, yeah, they loved it. It was the fact, because if the cling film was slidey and, and oily enough, she could slide up and down my body as much as she wanted, basically, and I couldn't <laughs> move my arms so she could put where she wanted and I couldn't breathe sometimes. Yeah. But it was all a part of the, the show, so to speak, uh. you know, as I like to call it. But at the same time, I mean, that was that was unique and, and things like that. And I remember also an Alsatian. An Alsatian's nerves gone somewhere and, you know, while I was in the middle of something with a certain lady and, oh, right. up and up, I jumped and, you know, oh, she went and I was like, oh, God, it's a dog, you know, it's okay. She liked the dogs to watch. I've wore leads. You know, little things like that. There's you wore, like, a collar and stuff. Each that. to their own, yeah. you know, each to their own. Fucking hell, dude. I mean, <laughs> I mean, personally, I like to do it with my hands and my mind, you know, and I think you can create anything with that. That's enough for me, but I've been tied in something that's been round. I wouldn't even know what it's called. I call it a Ferris wheel, but, you know, <laughs> and they've literally, I've been like this, and I'm spinning round in this bloody wooden <laughs> thing, and, and you know, boing, 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 boing. Yeah. And I'm like, this is great, you know, so... This is the this is exactly what you were referring to, although when you say they get bored. Yeah. And they just need more and more crazy extreme shit. Yes. Plus cocaine. Yes. I mean, it's a known fact as well that these days a lot of the rich. I mean, I know people that do this for a fact. It was nothing that I ever done, but they they pay people to blackmail them. They'll send them pictures of them doing indecent acts and then say to them, You'll blackmail me. And they get kink off that. Yeah, they? I've heard of this before. There was a girl I, I was friends with who um, was asked by... I mean, her profession was, you know, webcamming and yes. stuff. Yes, yeah. And she, she had this guy sort of ask her, like, threaten me to show this to my wife and yes. stuff. And I was like, fucking hell. And they pay. And they pay Wild. Yeah, yeah, and they, they're paying him for black. Yeah. Man. I mean, that's like... She's like ringing up going... I'm going to fucking tell you why. Yeah. I'm like, how do you do this? Like, I just need the money. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I gotta... fucking hell. <laughs> Wild. No, it is. And this, mm. this is what's come to you. Like you said, that, that thing you were saying earlier on, this person's a very strong businessman. He's in control of a thousand people, their jobs, their lives and everything. He has to be seen as being proper and everything. So when the cameras aren't looking and there's no one around, like you say, that's where, you know, they change. You'll find that the most strongest men... Forgive me if this sounds out of thing, but that have got this thing about usually the most homophobic men you'll ever meet, but they are bisexual. They just don't know mm. or don't want to admit to it. Uh. You know, so what? But that fight inside them, because of what we're born and bred to believe or what we're born a robot into, in a sense. It, it yeah, stops, we've, we've all seen those outwardly homophobic men who you're like, you just love dick, yes. don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the best one is, is when they go up and they go, do you see men? And I go, no, no, sorry, I don't. Like, they walk and I think, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know, yeah. But even on a personal level, like as someone who's always, I feel like, stressed out and, and kind of in control, having a woman in bed being in control is fun. I, I, and I like yes. being able to switch off and, yes. and, and, and let the woman be the one, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this is the other thing as well. Some people choose drugs. Some people choose alcohol. Some people jump out of aeroplanes to get that buzz. I use it in the bedroom. Mm. That's my escape. I'm a completely different person in that bedroom. I, you know, for me, all my worries, all my worries, everything just goes. The stress just goes away because I've spent four, five hours, whatever. Not for, thinking about all that. Exactly. And pleasing. Mm. Now, for me, it's about pleasing the other person. I get a turn on from seeing the other person enjoy sex so the more they come the better it is for me and then obviously sometimes I don't even bother it depends whether they want me to or not and I'll just move on to the next one you know that was kind of like that sort of thing but yeah. you know did like, you have multiple clients in a day back then was uh, the, that normal or? yeah the most I ever done I kind of knew this question was coming the most I've done in a week was eight um, and the most I've kind of done in a day is three and that was literally, I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, like, people would, it's the thing, you wouldn't believe me unless you followed me around and saw me, but I'd go to a house here 
and 300 metres down the road I go to a house there after being here and then I go home. Were they all aware of it? Were they cool with that? They didn't want to talk. They, a lot of the girls, in a sense, kind of wanted a little bit more after a while. They all fell in love with me. I mean, one girl, she told me she had terminal cancer and she had three months to live. She's still alive now, just to get my attention. And I, being me, took the time with her. I put my effort into her. I give her... I'm not, and, oh. That's brutal, but I, oh, there's so, there's still I'm, I feel like I'm still unpacking this whole experience <laughs> with you. From the bits that I read in the book, it seemed to say that you had a partner while this was going on. Yeah, no, I I met. She turned out to be my wife in the end. We did get married in the end. We had three kids together, and you know we got on really well. She's a great girl, and she does amazing body kids. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better ex-wife. I've got to be honest. Was this sort of cool or was this something that was unknown yeah no it, it was unknown when i first met her i was doing it at the time uh -huh. uh, and it was about six months after that we were together when i stopped and i basically give up all of that for her uh -huh. and the books and everything like so they were asking me for the book then and i said no i'm not, I'm not gonna write it i'm not okay. gonna write it i i kind of felt these people were my friends naive maybe i don't know but you know um at the same time, it got to a very... She came home early one night and one of the clients had just left and I think she knew at that point. And every now and then when the money was tight, I went out and got the money we needed, but I had no choice. I mean, what am I going to do? Am I going to pick up another part-time job for a minimum wage and work 24, 28 hours a day or am I going to go get the, the money for the shoes that on the nieces and nephews needs for school? Because nobody else could afford it. So unless, you know... And that was mainly my intention at the time. Walking into a shop with a pound in my pocket was not an enjoyable experience. So that it's always been in my life, but it's never been as the fact for my kinky pleasure. It was just a, a means to an end, a means to survive, basically. So, but after we got married, stopped completely. That's where I draw the line. Because if someone's going to put a ring on my finger and give me the respect to do that, then... No, and that's where it kind of dwindled away into nothing. And then when years later, I thought, well, actually, I'm going to write it now. I'm going to write my thing. And I didn't expect it to take off. I didn't expect anyone. I thought, you know, I'm just going to be, but as long as I get it off my mind, I don't really care. Was there any other experiences that were mind-blowing and wild in these crazy rich parties? I, I think also as well, like, I don't want to, uh, what's the word, categorise anyone or put them in a stipulate or anything, if that's the right word. Uh, but it's a sense of the mummy and daddy's boys. And, the, and you know, like when they talk about their mummy and daddy, they're like 40 years old and they go, mummy, daddy, and they've got those issues and you kind of see it in their sexual acts, if you know what I mean. Like oh. I said, when they're wearing nappies or they're being told they're a naughty boy and they've got to go to their room and drink their milk and read their bedtime story. That, that So that isn't as sexual in, in a sense. It's more like mental, isn't it? It is, but to them... Is sexual. They, they're getting turned on by this. They're getting turned on by the fact that somebody's uh, kind of like their mother figure, if you know what I mean, is telling them what to do, or their father figure even. Oh. Um, there's so many. Like I said, I could list a line off of, you know, I said I've worn a lead before, I've been dressed up in all the gear and, oh. you know, all little things like that. BDSM style stuff? Yeah, BDSM was a massive thing. Uh, really? Yeah, massive thing for these guys. I mean, it was it was the case of more of anything than being tied down and tied up in certain areas. You know, when you know what you're doing with a piece of rope, you can pretty much tie anyone up in a situation where you, it's an easy access, shall we just say that, yeah. yeah. Um, but mine was a bit more, uh, it, because of the massage side of things, it was, that's what they all craved. It was the essential side of the massage and getting to know them, the spiritual side, feeling completely, I mean, as we know, 5% or 15% of the body starts producing endorphins when you get a massage that are close to sexual activity, you start to get horny. That's the reason why massage is so close to sex. Yeah, because that, that, that's seen as a very... I don't know, I've had massages before where I've felt those sort of beginnings of an of a, a erection. Yes. And I'm like, fuck yeah. me, I need to yeah. start thinking about something else here. But you, what you're saying is it's quite a normal feeling to have in that sense. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, there's been plenty of times when I have given a male client and he's got, you know, excited and he's been embarrassed, completely embarrassed. But I suppose they're half asleep and they're, like you say, they're being rubbed all over. They're not really thinking. Well, exactly. And I don't think that's me because I think, because I've had... Uh, a few celebrities say to me, oh, I want a female. And I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not that way. You're, you're safe, you know? And they're like, no, 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 I want a female. If men are out there, you know, are thinking about, how do I give my woman 
Mm. A good old massage with with the minimal skills that we're going to have. You know, we we don't have the specific training you have. But if you got any advice out there for men who want to set the mood, definitely. I mean, just literally use your hands, warm them up first. That's the mm. best thing ever. Mm. But it is also like little things like feathers. You know, you could use a feather, or even like even if we're sitting here right now, I could use that candle. I could mm. use that lead over there. I could use a piece of that branch over there to tickle over her buttocks and the side of her back. Oh. Now that will stimulate her lymph nodes, which are turning her body into a crazy shiver and she'll get goosebumpy, and then all of a sudden I'll spray ice cold water on her back <gasps> so it's a kind of I'm taking every sense that that person's got whether they're blindfolded which obviously gives you more touch and sound whisper in the ear I'm going to do some real bad things to you right now <laughs> you know you know you know, you know, you know? <laughs> And, and straight away they go, oh my God. And it is because of the whisper. Even now doing it, I'm getting goosebumpy, you know? And you just, little things like that, play on people's senses. So when it comes to massage, literally don't jump yourself on the body. Try and get them on the side of the bed and start on the side of the bed and slowly integrate your body to their body. So start with your hands and then go to your body. Once your body's on top of them and you're giving them a massage on their back, you can use your body weight to just use the effluage. Literally just go up the centre of the spine, don't touch the spine at all, and go out and back. I'm assuming you're, the you're applying oil? Yes, yeah. Oh. And, uh, uh, nine times out of ten, I'll use baby oil. And the reason being, it's easier for what I do. And secondly, not many people are allergic to it. When you start messing around with different things, you only want one allergic reaction, and that's you, I'm finished, I'm struck off, and I, you know, let's be honest, if I want to make one wrong move as a mm. therapist, I've had it, so to speak. But it is the little things, and, and patience as well. Put some music on, put a candle on, roll a cigarette if you smoke, and smoke it while she's laying there naked. Mm -hmm. And admire her body. That alone is given the anticipation of a, oh, this is going to start in a minute. Anticipation this is a big thing <laughs> for you. It feels like you're, you're very uh, in tune with the mental side of what a woman is thinking and feeling. And yes. playing with those senses and just slowly building her up to that point is a real winner. Because women do take a lot longer to get excited they do. than men do. They do. And we forget that. Yes, they do. And, and I understand that. It, it's in, in just to, you know, quickly off you go, so to speak. It, <laughs> It's a, it's a sense of, for me, what makes me different to everybody else is every sense of that person, their hearing, their sight, their smell, their sound, their touch, everything is explored in that session. So, and it can be done in different areas. Like we'll start off with the touch side of things and then we'll go for the blowing. Just gently across their back, you know. A drip of water that runs down the spine into the, the sort of, you know, the, the, the butt cheeks, so to speak. Mm. I mean, that in itself is a, oh, if you know what I mean. That sounds mm. ridiculous. Then you've got the shower. Then you change the environment. And then you say, well, we'll put a little bit of role play in it. I'll be the prison master and you're going to be my slave today. Vice versa. I'll do what you want to ask me. And then nine times out of ten, this is a God's honest truth, if I say to a God, do you ever want to swap the roles? No. No. I love it. Just, uh, just do what you do. So realistic, they get this idea of like, I'm going to get him to do this and I'm going to get him to do that and they'll all end up saying the same thing. I'll just let you take care of it. And I go, yeah, that's, that's the best way. Because then that way, I know what you want realistically before they even want it. I know it sounds crazy, but you can just tell by some people they're uptight and they're stressed. And I think the best thing about it for me is after we're finished, the look on their face, the confidence in them, and just that whole fact of their whole persona has gone from to... Yeah, I'm alive. I'm alive. And you know? and uh, my massages that I've had in the past that were good are the ones that you know you you almost leave there feeling like oh my god I'm knackered now. I yes. feel like just totally all of the tension is just gone. Yeah. And when you're talking about the heat um, and the cold, I had a hot stones massage once, which was very good. Yes, yeah. Um, I do them myself. They're honestly they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. They're very good for muscles, very high impact and yeah. stuff. I'm, I'm a great believer in all my clients. I, I tell them, I know information that you don't. That's what makes me stand here and you don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that information yeah. and I'm going to tell you how to fix yourself. This is why I'll never be rich because if my clients come to me, they're fixed in two to four sessions at the most. No matter how long they've had the injury, I've got a 99% uh, you know, clear rate of every person that I've had are fixed. The 1% I'm still waiting for. You know, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be blatant to say 100, percent but, and it is just saying like, look, you know, everyday little things. Like for instance, if you're sat on a computer all day with this hand, automatically your brain has sent a signal to the end of that finger and using just as much blood and much muscles as you need to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the same when you sit on the phone for too long. You go like this. It's because your muscles are shrunk. There's not mm. enough blood in there. Your brain looks at stuff and says, that's how much muscles you need to pick that up. 
Now, when it comes to a massage and stuff, what I'm trying to say to people is your body is like a car engine. It's like a tune. And I tap into that tune, I hear that tune. Now, if the rhythm is out of place, and that means one of the meridian points or one of the channel points, or you're holding stress from something, nine times out of ten, actually ten times out of ten, is stress that does it for mm-hmm. people. Worry about money or whatever. We work on those links. I get them to appreciate what they're doing, what's making them bad. Now, two things, major things in this world I see regularly is people hold stress in their shoulders or their butt cheeks. You'll see people with either no butt cheeks, which means they're doing this all the while, and they're tensing their butt cheeks, and they're moving their legs, and they're standing, they're talking to them, massive, they're restricted the blood flow in the lower back, it's going to cause a problem for the lower back, you're going to have spine problems. And then it's going to ride up to the back, and you're going to stop holding your breath, because you, while you're doing this, you're holding your breath. Mm-hmm. So now your brain's not getting oxygen. The stress starts coming, your body panics, you're thinking, why am I feeling like this? It's a simple fact that you are tense in one of your muscles in your body. For men, mainly, it's here. We get in the car, we do this. And we start driving. And before you know it, you're going, what am I doing? Relax my shoulders, yeah. relax my shoulders. And that's all it was. It wasn't a massive muscle industry. It was just about that person going, actually, I need to get perfect balance. And yeah. So I say to him, you know your body better than what anyone else would. Now, I do this thing at night. I lay on the side and I sleep on the floor. And uh, when I sleep on the floor, I take three deep breaths in. And as I breathe out, I move one leg this way into a recovery position. And I switch to the other side. And as I breathe out all my oxygen, as much as I can, my back goes, clunk, 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 clunk. And like, oh, but it all like lines and the line and stuff. So just by breathing and relaxing and knowing that you can control those muscles because you've been working with them for so long, it kind of like every night I go to bed, I wake up a new man because I'm like, oh, there we go, we're back in line. You know how that feels. I think everybody does these days. I mean, the the shoulder thing for a man, you're bang on as well. And I didn't really realize this until I started boxing because. When you box, the more uptight and tense you are, the yeah. worse you throw. And I- ironically, the, n- the natural thing for us as men to do when we want to hurt someone is we tense up, we're like, I'm going to fucking yeah. kill you. <laughs> but the reality is the more loose and relaxed you are, the better you are oh, at yeah. throwing punches because yes. everything flows and it's nice and fast. And, um, like Bruce Lee said, be like water. This is it. It's mate. Easier, the, isn't it? Yeah, be free-flowing and, yeah. and, and do what you need to do. And... Um, you clearly are very knowledgeable in regards to uh, the body. And one topic I'm definitely interested to ask you about is oral sex. Yes. Because I'm sure, knowing women as I do, that you uh, have a degree in that. <laughs> uh, so what is your philosophy when giving women oral sex? Oral sex, I, again, it's not how you do it, it's what you're doing. If you're just, like, you're not uncomfortable with yourself and you open the legs and off you go, that's not, you know, start off at the top. Right in the neck and then go to the hip and then work yourself down to that area. Mm. But while you're there, everyone's different. Everybody's different. I mean, you know, there's some women like a rough, a, a bit tough on the tongue and the other women like it just gently. You've got to try and figure out which one it is. Now, yeah. touch wood, every single one of them has completed. <laughs> but I do hear occasions of my friends saying to me, oh, I was there for ages, she didn't do nothing. I said, well, Change it. Yeah. What do you mean? I said, change it. Just stop for a little while. You know, if you're going down the same as everything in life, if you're going down a path and you're just running into a brick wall, you don't keep doing it. You stop, don't you? It's the same thing as oral sex, really. Yeah. You don't keep running that brick wall. Take your time. Women vary a lot, in my experience, from. Um and that is the most fascinating thing about the oh, vagina, yeah. like, isn't it? Oh, it's, like, oh. it's, it's a Honestly. little magical thing, though, because sometimes you're. Uh, that you feel like you've got it completed with a woman and then you'll meet a new woman and it's completely, completely different. different. It is, yeah. yeah. Everyone's individual, but again, you mix it up. Mm. You know, I, one of the clients, she used to meet me on a lunchtime and I'd lay on the end of my bed with my head on the end of the bed. She'd pull her nicks to one side and sit on my face and I'd do what I'd done and she'd leave. That was it. That was just the power thing of that. I didn't have to do anything else about them. Just lay there, so to speak. <laughs> that was fantastic because she was gorgeous. But... Yeah. <laughs> But at the same time, this was a lawyer, you know, and I'm thinking, imagine if I ever see you in court, how awkward is this? That makes be? sense, though. Yeah, it does. It yeah, does. for a lawyer, a female lawyer to be that way, like, yeah. But again, change it, you know, a, a lot of people, like a woman, if you asked, I mean, a lot of girls I know haven't had an orgasm through intercourse. That is just oral. And I'm like, well, change it around a bit. There's a spot. You've got to find the spot, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, like I said, get them to sit on top of you. Get them to do, how would you like me to do this? Do you want to be bent over while I'm doing it? Or do you want to be sitting on my face? Do you want to be, do you want to tie me up and then, you know, take full control? Because that's another power thing for mm-hmm. people, isn't it? Um, and you just mix it up. But you kind of, with all sex and stuff, you just got to just take your time and be you and explore what you want to explore. But also let your partner know. That's the thing with me. One good thing about my book is they all know that I'm 
into some kinky stuff. I like doing some stuff. So they all already ad admitted, actually, this is going to be something special. Now, that's the other downside to it. I've now got to live up to that expectation. And you know as well as what I do. It depends on when you wake up in the morning, how you feel for the day. It varies, bro. Yeah. You know? And also you know? for the woman. Like, there's some women out there who probably say about me that I'm shit in bed, and I'm like, I was shit with you. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm shit with all women. <laughs> but like... <laughs> like, yeah, I am. You know, <laughs> I think some women forget that, you know, some days you're feeling better, and some women bring out the best in you, and yeah. some women just, you know, lay there and aren't, aren't that interactive. And I usually find the people that say you're shit in bed are the ones that have worse themselves. <laughs> uh, you know? I mean they are the ones that say you want to point the finger the worst ones are the lot I had you know? a similar experience though is because I, I basically got a, a, a girl um, leaked my DMs once and they were the worst possible DMs when the, you, the ones you send when you're drunk as fuck like, oh. <laughs> um, but ironically a lot of men were like slagging me off of that and I'm like oh meanwhile bro yeah. a lot of women are reading them yeah, and yeah. DMing me going exactly. I'm up for a bit of whatever you want to do because you're fucking wild you're it, not boring you're not yeah, yeah. exactly but not being boring exactly. is yeah. is a blessing for a start. It is, yeah. it is. And, and that's the thing, you know, you know, you, you, you look at some people and they sit in a room for an hour and not say a word and you're like, well, what's the bloody point, you know? And that's the one thing with me, I'll, I'll always just, whoever comes, if you've turned up at my house tomorrow, there'll be a bed for you to stay and you'll be well looked after. That's how we are as a family, you know? And for me, I think people know that when they walk in, so automatically they're relaxed. They're, you know, they don't have no expectations and I think half the time they just chuck themselves in the bed and go do your worst. I'm like, okay, are you sure about that? What about, um, I'm interested in what you think about anal sex because that's a taboo for some people. I'm, I'm sure it's very, um, you know, mild for you at this stage. But um, some women mm -hmm. love it, yeah. some women terrified of yes. it. What, what's your experience? Oh, this is, a, this is a very good question. This is something that I've been, nearly every woman that I've, you know, in the last year, shall we say, have been very dubious about anal sex. They're very... Oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Because I, I don't know if this is your experience, but in my experience, as someone who's very laid back mm -hmm. and, you know, happy to warm up the area and do the yes. procedure, the way, you yes. know, there's a lot of men out there yeah. who just seem to spit on it and go for it. <laughs> yeah, and, no, and they no. terror, like they scar a woman. Exactly. And they fuck it for the rest of us. Exactly. So stop doing yeah, that yeah. if you listen. Fucking belly. Uh, right? <laughs> stop it. It's not a mallet. Uh, right? It's a precision instrument. Remember that, okay? <laughs> so what, yeah, what yeah, is your experience? Warm, like you say, warm up, get them and they have have to be exactly happy with it as well. I mean, you know, it's something, but the one thing I will say is once we've gone through the process that I usually do to get to that point, mm. is they want to try it or, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, well, actually, I'll give it a go. It's not really on the top of my list, I've got to be honest. But at the same time, every single one of them had an orgasm for it and they had the best orgasm in their lives. Now, when it comes to oral sex, you've got a finger. Use it. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's the bum, you know, and, and it does. It, it doesn't have to be rough or anything like that, yeah. but it will transform their sex. It like, does seem amazing. to take it to another level it does. if you can does. incorporate that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when they orgasm and come to it, they're like, oh my God. And then they can't get enough of it. It's, oh, what, do it? should we do it? And I'm like, <laughs> you right, okay, a monster. Yeah, basically. Uh, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm only human. There's times when things happen when it comes around. It can be quite messy, but you've got to take that out of your head. You've got to get it out of your head and think, see the person, you know, forget all that. It's natural. Don't, <laughs> don't expect to, you know, go out in the rain and not get wet as well. But, <laughs> but also... Come on, we're all grown ups here. You know what I mean, and I'm I'm yeah. sure that when people are listening and we're giggling away as we're saying this, it, it is a bit of fun. But we're all fucking grown ups. Yeah. This is what people yeah, exactly. do behind closed doors, it and is. we all walk around pretending like this doesn't happen yeah. because we're civilized and whatever. But we're all fucking animals. As society's gone on through the years, that animal instinct has been switched off and forgotten about. People like us, we tap into it because we can't forget about it. We're made to keep having that. Mm -hmm. And I, that's where I say to people, in a sense, that animal instinct is good in the right environment. Don't go out smashing people's brains in. Take a woman mm -hmm. and show her the best time of her life with that animal instinct. I'm, I growl, I scream, you know, I do. I rawr, <laughs> because that's just like, what, you know, you know. And now, women like a man who isn't afraid to let it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, the, the animal kingdom, I think we could learn a lot from that. And like Einstein said, we've got to start looking at our past before we understand our future. And, and for me, who's to say we weren't here before? Yeah, and you, you, you do say a lot about your, you know, your past when you were talking about these experiences that you are providing these women with, that there's, there's, 
I don't know, in order for you to get to that sensual level, you do seem to think about the spiritual side of things and that you're, you're providing them with a service that isn't just physical. Was there a little bit of you that was sort of saying things to yourself to make yourself feel better about what you were offering? Do you think possibly? Oh yeah, 100%. We're always going to sell ourselves as much as we can. Mm. But And I'm not saying that makes it any less real to you. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Like I said, it's a completely different mm. side. But in my sense, I'm a great believer in action, speak mad mad than words. I could sit here and fill you all full of crap and everything, you know, I'll tell you all the things, but no, no, but action. It's what I do when I leave here. Now, the, I've always lived my life by that. If somebody's punished me or accused me of being something like you said, my actions will outspeak my words. I wouldn't even retaliate to her because as soon as I do, I've then entered a conversation I don't want to be having. What I'll do is I'll keep my head down and my actions will prove what I've done. So if anyone want to come along yeah. and watch and see and learn or have a girl, one of my clients to chat to, and they can tell you their impression and then their opinion of it. I mean, realistically, I'm offering a service and in like the Amazon review, I suppose, they're the ones you've got to say. But for me personally, there's only one person in this world who's going to lift my confidence up. There's only one person in this world that's going to allow me to be me and that is me. And I'm not, I've accepted the fact that I'm not some big time gangster or some big time Ron Jeremy or some... You know, I'm just a normal guy with a normal life, with a family who had an opportunity in life. Mm -hmm. And he wrote about it. You are normal in some respects, but you're not normal in others. 100%. Right? So you come out of a scenario where you're being a young man being used for your services and a little bit of a tool for these older women uh, to get pleasure out of. And then you're now a grown man, you've yes. told this story, and this story has then hit the ears of a lot of these women who yeah. are like, wow, that sounds like an experience. I want to have that experience. And they're now approaching you. Yes. You've become a bit of a prize to some of these women who've read this book. And, yeah. you know, we all seen what the Christian Grey book did. Yeah. And you're a real person. If yeah. Christian Grey was a real man, you're based on me. It would be an, yeah, <laughs> it would be a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, um, so you're you're a real living person who mm. they can come to and go. I want to have this experience, yes. yeah. and now you're the you're the prize. So it's a completely different scenario, and no one is really trained to deal with being mm. approached. Not men. We're the chasers. Yes, you know, we're the lucky yeah. man who gets to. Uh, I don't know. have that anymore. Yeah, now yeah. you've become the chase. I have. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what like I said to you earlier. Reverse roles, and that mm. is so weird to be on the other side of the fence. It's like, oh my god, you know, really. What, what, what? So, can you take me through the beginning of that? Yeah, of course. And when you realise, okay, I'm now getting messages. Yeah. And I'm, how did that? make you feel did it make you feel good or at the time i was literally close to having a nervous breakdown i suppose and i was laying in a caravan with no heating and no food now my kids were warm and my kids were fed but i had nothing i lost everything and uh, you know a messy time in my life can we explore that then because i mean i know it's it's not a nice memory no but but you've been very candid and yeah. there's no shame in and hitting rock bottom. No. Everyone, l lots of people have. A hundred percent. I mean, it was it was a time when I laid on the floor in my underwear and I was shaking and I couldn't stop myself convulsing. I was like this. And what, I, what brought that on then? Divorce. Really? I was broken. Broken in two. It destroyed my kids or everything and that just, uh, oh, I panicked. I was scared. I don't, what's going on? I don't, you know, I, I, I just didn't know what to do. How long had you been married before you divorced? Kid? We'd been together for 18 years and then um, okay. uh, 10 years married, yeah. And, you know, even now, I'd, I'll always look out for the girl, you know what I mean? I never let anything come to her because I think the world of her, I always, well, I always love the girl, do you know what I mean? But not. But you didn't want to get divorced. No, I didn't know. I, I was. Uh, it's funny because it was kind of, you know, I'd kind of accepted the fact that this, this was it and I was happy with that. I was happy with what I had. And then two weeks later, it all ended. And it was messy. And you Sorry, know, sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to stop you. Um, you said you'd accepted that you were happy with what you had and then two mm. weeks later, it was all over. Yeah. So yeah. you're saying you're recounting a memory from two weeks prior to her asking for the divorce. Yes. So you were in a comfort zone. Oh, I... Honestly, Things were sweet. I'm so happy. And then out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, 
I'm not a psychologist and I wasn't there, but but naturally for someone on the outside, you think if you thought it was fine mm. and she thought she wanted a divorce, mm. then there's a clear a blind okay. spot there in yes. your behalf. Yeah. So what were you not seeing, do you think? I know what exactly what it was. I think I got so wrapped up with writing the book and getting so wrapped up in making a point for people to say, um, ego, you know, this ain't right, I can't have this. I just, you know, I can't live in a world where people are getting ripped off left, right and centre. It kind of ate away at me. Do you think you became a little obsessed? 100%. 100%. And then I neglected her needs. And I neglected the kids' needs because for me, it was never enough for them. Working back was, oh, what a nice life for them, you know? I've done all these things. I've seen how the other half lives, so I know that it's out there. I got so consumed by it all that I think I neglected my family. Now, I accept that, and I'll always be a good guy. I'll always do the right thing by my family, regardless of what happens. At the time, I'd lost everything I ever cared about. Everything I ever... Uh, how, how did you lose it? Because you mentioned you were in a caravan. How yeah. did you end up going from the family home? Well, basically, there was, like I said, it was a very messy divorce. And, uh, you know, I was escorted off the property and um, not allowed to go back. So basically, my best friend, my wife, my family and everything was... I weren't allowed to why, see Why it. weren't you not allowed, though? She, I think for... Well, I can't really talk for her, can I? But from my point of view, what I saw is she was quite intimidated and frightened of me. She, I think she thinks I was going to go crazy and throw her across the room and stuff, but that nah, was never me, you know? I've never done that. I've never hit a woman in my life and I never will do. Oh. And, you know, again... Do you mean like you were having passionate um, arguments or...? Well, no, this is the thing. We, we were... It was just out of the blue. It was like one of those things, everything was fine. One week, everything was great. Next minute, bang! And I was like, whoa, what? It was just a massive change all of a sudden for mm. me. And I was like, Jesus. And as time went on, I started to realise that, you know, the things I have got, and I started to appreciate the positivity in life and I started to let things go and think, actually, oh, it's not my responsibility to tell the world that the government are all perverts and rip people off left, right and centre. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I kind of let it go and I concentrated at that time. My kids were devastated. They were going through so much and I just wrapped myself around them every second of every day. Mm. I mean, I threw my whole life into them. I still do now. You so... Know. so so we're, we're we're moving beyond the part where, yes, yeah, sorry, so you yeah. were you were at a part where she'd said we don't want you around anymore. Yes, was that a temporary thing or was that at the time permanent? Oh no, it was permanent. She she <coughs> already made her mind up, and you know, again, these things happen in these times. But she'd already planned everything. The money was all gone already, and things like that. It, it's kind of like there's no fairness in love and war. And again, I don't really hate anybody or despise anyone for their their choices in life. You know, they have to live and learn by them. All I really, I mean, at the end of the day, I've got three kids and one of them is a girl. And all I could think about night after night is who's going to be around my children? You know, what? what where are they? What, am I going to see them again? It, it, yeah. You know, I was, Unfortunately, we're in a society where... There's nothing more sexist than divorce courts. Mm. And you have no power. And what they say goes. And and I understand that. And I am not a person who has, has any involvement in your relationship, but I do know that to yeah. be true from every man who's ever been divorced. Yes. Ever. Yeah, it is. It, it, you're fucked. <laughs> exactly. Um, ever. <laughs> yeah. So, so the fact that this was coordinated and it's sort of a rug pulled situation where all of a sudden the money's gone and you're in a you know, a situation where I've got nowhere to go. Nothing. So yeah. that's why you ended up in the caravan. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I did sleep on the streets. I've lived rough. I, you know, I stepped in my car a few months ago, actually, mm -hmm. just for some peace. And it was because, I know it sounds crazy, you know, I work full time. Um, I have my other jobs and my other little things, but it's just enough to get by. It's like treading on water all the while. You're just, you know, you're paying bills left, right and centre. You're trying to keep your... And, and, and nothing's cheap anymore. You know, the kids want the phones and things. And I don't really have much need for my life if I didn't have my children I'd live in Tibet I'd go and live in Tibet with the monks and just go and have a very peaceful life <laughs> without all the internet and without anything I'm yeah. very simple but with my kids it stops me from doing anything and I, I, I accept that I mean I've been asked four times in my life to go and be a playboy for someone and get paid millions for it mm -hmm. in LA California Scotland and Norwich believe it of all places Norwich I know, <laughs> just on the outside of Norwich I was like what wait really you just round the corner every time the question was asked so would you and this was the deal. One of them would give me £60,000, I'd move them in the house, I'd marry them, but I'd have to be theirs all the while. 
I've got children. Well, you can see them once every two weeks. Or, well, they can't come. Sorry. If my children ain't coming, they're not in. So I've turned down a lot of opportunities for the fact of my kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm not ashamed to say it. But at that time when the book came out to answer your question, I laid there with nothing, thinking, Jesus, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Literally shaking. I could not stop myself from shaking. And then I stood up and I thought, you ain't got time to be feeling sorry or bad for yourself at the moment. You've got three little children that need your strength more than anything. So I put all my worries to one side. Then I went for the book. I thought, no, there's nothing stopping me now. I haven't got a family to protect or I'm not married anymore to worry about the consequences. So out come the book. After the book, I mean, pff, that was amazing. There was ladies left, right and centre. They were chucking money at me. They were asking me to go to places, holidays, all over the place. And I was, no. Was this different. through social media they were reaching yes, out? Social media, all social media. Okay. Yeah, uh, most of it was Facebook, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. Nearly all of my clients come on Facebook. What kind of age range are we talking? I'm talking from literally 22 to actually 63, mm. you know, and and it is it, it, a vast range, I mean, all of different ages, but in a sense, the youngest would have been 22. So did you start dating any of these women? <coughs> yes, I did to start off with because I was very confused and thought, well, what do I do? Do I need to get back? I need to find uh, something. You don't have to justify it. You know, you're a man, yeah. you're, you're a single man, and if, if a woman who's a good-looking woman is interested in you, I, I don't see why anyone should judge you. No, exactly, you know? exactly. But again, every person I went with, I found that, you know, I'm not going to be able to have a life until another 15 years when they're all grown up and they can leave, so I can't really give anyone my time or commitment simply because of that reason, and I was come first. Um, and then I, I met a lady, we went out, we had dinner, she was very well off, very well off, and she promised me everything and looked she, after she'd, me. She'd read the book then, yeah? Yes. All yeah. right. And it was on the context of a, you know, a business deal. It was when we first met. Mm. And then I said, you know, I, won't, I'm not, I wasn't that person that I was all back then. You know, I'm an older, I'm a father now, I've worked, I've seen life. And I said to her, I don't really feel right doing it like this. Should we date for a little while? You know, so we dated, because I'm trying to do the right thing here. It didn't work. It didn't work. I got... I don't like the fact of being in a relationship where you have to tell the person where you're going, what you're doing, where you've been, and with me, there's always going to be an issue for a lady. They're always going to say, you get so much attention, there's always going to be something there. Apart from the girl that I'm seeing now, I mean, she's amazing, she takes it all in her stride and lets me get on with it, because she trusts me, she knows I'm not that kind of person, and I'm honest enough to tell them as well, I, you know, if this is the difference, and I say it to anyone, that might get you in shit and stuff, but tell them. I'm going to go and sleep with someone else. I've been offered. I mean, it might hurt them. It might say, oh, I'm not good enough for you. No, it's not that. It's just me. I can't settle with one woman for some reason. It's just, it doesn't seem to be enough for me at the time, you know? I suppose I was looking for something that wasn't there. I was looking to replenish my marriage, weren't I? So this is post-book release. You're, yes. now, you're now in a situation where you're dating, but then you're wanting to explore all these opportunities that are being thrown your way. Yes. And let's be real, how many men who get any success do that? I mean... I'm not going to throw stones because I've made my mistakes. Um, and it is difficult because we're not programmed to be the ones to reject. You know, I think uh, women just get a far better education in how to handle that from a young age because men are always sort of approaching them. And, and only when you get any sort of status do you end up having to face that challenge. Many men don't really ever experienced that it, and it is exactly. a gift and a curse because all of a sudden you're then worrying about why are people interested and you're in a really weird scenario because you're at a financial disadvantage yeah. because you're hooking up with these well-off women who you know they they want your services but they also want to control you and it's mm -hmm. kind of a reverse situation to uh sugar daddy yes yeah sugar I'm mommy I'm the person on their arm. I'm like a, a gimmick to yeah. them, if you know what I mean. I'm like the, the entertainment for the evening, so to speak. <clears throat> That's exactly it. But Did you revert back to that then? Yeah, I did. All those years later? I did, yeah. Mm. It, it came out, this is what I mean. I started doing my jigglo work again for the last three years and then until I sort of, you know, it, delusions of grandeur. I mean, you know, the, the, the book was out. All these ladies were offering me dates and dinners and movies and holidays away and presents. I mean, they'd all bring new phones and, you know, uh, like all different gifts. We wanted to Do you have like a set thing. rate that you charge them? Uh, yeah. It, uh, again, this is where I'm too nice. That so would be like, well, what can you afford? Oh. <laughs> because again, uh, the, the guys that I was with in the book, they, money was never an option. It was like they throw it at you. But now this is like a, 
people that work for a living and people that are out there hard work and they're working all their life and on the weekend they want a bit of excitement. In come me. And, you know, I thought, yeah, I can do this, I'm that mate, you know. And So I went three years of still doing what I was doing back then. And then all of a sudden, I just completely lost interest. I thought, that's not me anymore. I'm trying to be something that I'm not. I'm trying to relive my youth. I'm trying to relive my past. Grow up, man. Sort yourself out, for Christ's sake. Told myself, got back into training, lost a lot of weight, started eating healthily. Don't drink, don't do drugs. So for me, it was a kind of win-win anyway. I started drinking boiling water, started eating my fast, and my mind started getting stronger. I started to realise not everybody in this world is as kind as me. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? I look at people and I think, well, I would pretty much give someone my left arm if I needed it. With no questions. That's how I've always, I've always, always been. Mm. But then it hit me. How far are you going to go with this before you're too old or you're washed up on the shore? Do you, do you know? I didn't want to be that person. So I kind of said, right, that's enough now. And the reason, another big reason was because I was getting more and more in the press and getting more and more noticed that I kind of felt I've got to be very careful about how I reply to this now. I've got to be very careful about what I say. All it takes is for me to go up there and one that will come out and go, I've got messages from him that say, I'm going to come around and do this. I'm going to... So I'm very pulled myself away and I've kind of become quite a family man. That's about me and the kids now and just me and the kids and my partner who I'm with at the moment. And it's lovely. It's nice. And I still get the offers. And there's still part of me that thinks, oh, I could, I could, I could. And I'm not going to lie to you, I have. But I had no choice, okay. you know. I, I need to explore that because the, you said there was a... Th I, I'm fascinated the fact that you reverted back mm. all those years later and, <clears throat> and had a three-year period where you were working again as a gigolo. Yeah. Threesomes seems to be the most sorry to interrupt you, Brian. Really? The threesome seems to be the most popular thing these days. Everybody wants a threesome. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> that, I'm a, it's, I'm a, it's the way you said that. Like, yeah. Everyone wants <laughs> a cup of tea. Uh, uh, it was horrible. such a casual way to say it. Um, and, and by threesomes, do you mean two uh, women or two men? Two women uh, or two men, one woman, yeah. I mean, I have a a guy that works with me, you know what I mean? We've known each other for years, so it's a bit easier for Double me. Like work. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, it's, it's something I must admit that I suppose if we do the logic, from what I've seen, about 50-50, you'll either enjoy it or you don't like it. Personally, I'm a one-on-one -on -one man. I mean, I do these things and I've been in the groups and stuff, but I, my, my best time is one-on-one. -on -one, so when you, you and know. your mate go around to this woman's house, mm -hmm. is her... Is there a fella who's aware of it? No, 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 she's, she's single. And the girls that have asked me have either been in relationships and they're out of relationships and they're in the single phase and they're like, look, I want to explore, can you help me out? Mm. Uh, advice to people who want to get into the business as well. So many people have said, how do you start? How do I get into it? And I've been giving them advice on how to protect themselves more than anything and just be very careful. So you, you have like websites and stuff that you guys uh, appear on where people can buy the services? Yeah, there, there's plenty out there. I mean, the main sort of one, am I allowed to say it? Or, I'd say. Yeah, adult work is, is, a, is one of the favourite ones uh -huh. for a lot of businessmen and stuff like that. I mean, I've had people from London that come and stay in Norwich and you know, mm. ring me up and say, I'm in the hotel, can you come and see me? Now, that gets a bit strange when you see the same person be on the counter, you keep walking in and walking out. Again, it's another thing I have to take into account. This person's watching me and thinking, what's he fucking doing? Do you know what I mean? He go in that room, he come out, and he's, his hair's everywhere, and he's smiling, and he goes, see you later. You know, and, <laughs> and, and, and I'm, thinking, I'm thinking, if that was me, I'd be like, what the hell is going on here? You know, so it wouldn't take too long for them to figure out. Now, again... With the kids in my life, I really try and keep that away from them. It's a separate side of my life. Now, with the, the guy that I ring nine times out of ten, the woman, the, the ladies that I've <coughs> met are very comfortable with me. They've sat in my company, we've watched movies, we've chilled out together, we've made love, we've done all sorts. Funnily enough, they asked me to make love to them, and then after that, they don't ever make love to me again. Fuck me. And I'm like, okay, no worries. Honestly, honestly, the love side of things is nice, right. but they, they're like, no, I don't want to, uh, you know, it's like, no, just to rather you, because again, that's still all touchy feelings. So in, in this three year period, what would you say was the average age of these women who are reaching out? Because I'm assuming that w women who read books yeah. have a, are of a certain age generally, and yeah. women who would want a, a man with your experience, your, your very specific set of skills yes. yeah. that you have. I would say between 30 and 60. 30 and 60 yeah. would be my sort of range. I have had younger girls, uh -huh. and I've said no. And there's a good reason for that. You know, I'm old enough to be their dad. And yes, they would have the best time in their life, but what I keep saying is just read the book. And if you go with a partner, get him to read it. What was it like you know? going with with, a, with an older woman? Did that 
Did that feel any different? I, honestly, it's one of my things. I, I, I know it sounds crazy, but an older woman's got experience. They know what they want. There's no, again, the confidence is there. Not all of them, but a lot of them, they know what they, there's no if and buts about it, oh. you know. And I, I suppose for me, it's, it's a turn on. It's, I like I like the older woman and I like, I like all sorts, you know, obviously. Yeah, of course, but man. at the same time, I can wake up on Monday and think, oh, I fancy sort of, I don't know, 30, you know, and mm. the next day, oh, I fancy something 60. And, you know, people think, how can you do it? But you don't, no one's seeing what I see. But know? it's also, I guess for you, a sexual appetite com becomes a lot like a, no a normal appetite is days where you just feel like something different. And for that three-year period, I mean, how, how often were you working? In COVID, honestly, book number two will have you all sitting there with your mouth open <laughs> because that was the most busiest time of my life. <laughs> I have never been so busy. I have never had so many messages. Oh, God. I, I am not joking. I was starting at six in the morning and getting home at three the next morning and getting up at six again and doing that for four or five days and then crashing. Right. People around me would say, slow down. Uh. The most in one day was three. And it was, it would sometimes, like eight clients in a week would be, the, at this stage, would be my limit. And I got, I've got to be honest, like I said, I got up to about a couple of years ago, I got to a point where I was like, I can't keep doing this. This mm -hmm. is getting like, I mean, you know, some nights I'd really enjoy it, Brian. I'd be like, yeah, I'm really up for this. And I'd go from one and then another. And, you know, and then some of them would get turned on by the fact. Some of them would ask me, where have you been? What have you been doing? A lot of them would say, tell me, hey, what you've been doing this week. They wanted to hear how I was fucking other women. I turned them on, you know. Some of them had um, a little side of buy in them that wanted to try stuff. And I said, okay, what we'll do is I'll talk to you about it while we're doing that. So I'm going to tell you to imagine that the person you're thinking of is in front of you right now and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And we get in the set and honestly, they love it. But then they say to me, I couldn't do it for real. Yeah. In, up here, that's yeah. a good, good game, but I couldn't do it for real. In a sense, for me, I'm just me. I'm never going to be anything different. So when I walk into any situation, like here, anywhere else, I'm just going to be me. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be open to say anything. The only way you could ever appreciate it is literally by talking to one of my clients, I should imagine. I, I, I think you're being very truthful um, because you're just so specific and the way you describe sex, yes. it's, it's from a man who knows what he's talking about. Um, and yeah, I mean... What a life you've had, bro. I mean, you just, I, I really felt the pain when you were talking about that divorce situation and, and, yeah. and just putting your children at the forefront of your mind through that. And I think, unfortunately, as, as, as nice as it is to know that you've had so many fun times, I really do feel for uh, you and, and for, for having to go through that scenario because a lot of men feel really powerless. Uh, in those situations, but I, I'm glad that you managed to push on through that because it takes a hell of a lot of strength, you yeah. know, and there's, there's many men, there's a reason why male suicide is so high and I'd guarantee, I'd stake my life on it that divorce and suicide are directly linked yeah. in men, especially. 100%. Got because me. when you take that access away to their children and when you, when you rip the, 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 uh, you know, the, the life's work from them, the amount of money that they've earned and you just leave them with pennies and you leave them without their children and everything that they've been building... Yeah. No wonder these men are out here killing themselves, and yet no one fucking talks about the divorce uh, exactly. laws. Exactly. It's a disgrace. Well, this is why I'm so cautious talking to you. Um, mm. You know, I've got some really strong views on that, and and I don't because it could just cause me problems, I suppose. But at the same time, it was unfair. I was dragged through the shit. I was mm. named and shamed. I had my actions had to do. And people slowly started to see actually he's not that person he's been mm. made out to be. But it's so funny how people will just believe what they want to believe because it's a new and known thing. And yet, all the people that I grew up with and known that love me, I've, you know, I have a, a nickname where I come from called the Guardian Angel mm. because I used to look after people and make sure they get home at night. Mm. And realistically, everybody that knows me knows that I've helped them in one way or another. Everyone I've touched in my life, I've done something for. Yeah. So I had a lot of people come up and go, that's wrong. He's not like that at all. You know, he's not that person. We all need a reason to do things. I just wish, I think the one thing I think in all couples is take away the hate take away the revenge tell the truth be honest say that I'm not happy this is what's going on in my life at the moment that would stop all the confusion but more than anything put the children first they're the ones that are in the middle of it all are going to suffer more than anything so f for me I mean 
I've spent a lot of time with Indians and gurus. I've spent a lot of time with influential people, as you know. So in my own mind, I'm quite strong enough to say, I've got to change this attitude. And slowly but surely, I realised that I'm the luckiest man alive because of my kids. That's all I need. I don't care about anything else. As long as they're okay, I'm good. It's hard to be a good man. It's not easy. No, it's not. But it is difficult. And you mentioned how you'd have those lapses where women would come chasing again and, mm. and you know, you, you'd you find yourself ugh, giving into temptation. Yeah. Did you find that you beat yourself up a little bit when those things would happen? <coughs> yeah, definitely. Because of the people that are in my life, I think they deserve a lot more. And I've got to be honest, they're good, you know. And they, you know, But they, they accept me. That's who I am. I can't help that. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to cheat on you. I can't promise you that. Look at me. Look at my life, you know. I mean... Has your has your current partner? Um, have you come to some sort of agreement? Yes, yeah. She's you know career minded, and I'm I'm obviously doing my own bit with the children and stuff. But you know, I, I never judge anyone for their actions. I'll only judge people on one thing in life, and that's how they are with their children, mm. and how they are with my children. So the person I'm with at the moment is the best person for my children. She makes me feel happy, and she puts my kids first. In other words. She didn't come in just for me. She accepted them as well. And for me, that's more than anything, and that's worth not breaking or messing around on because of that reason. If that reason changes, then, you know... And so you, you've managed to stay faithful to this, this partner? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. She'd, she'd sort of chop my, you know, the, the bits off. And I've even explained, <laughs> I've even said to her before, look, you know, I'm honest. I'm so honest, probably too honest, but I've said, look, there's a girl here who's messaged me, and you know her, and you know I'm just letting you know, and there's my response, wow. yeah? And here's my response. What, a friend of hers? Yeah, I don't say any names, she doesn't see the names or anything, because I don't want no trouble caused, obviously, you know, because that could, you know what I mean, but I just say, to, just so you know, and here's my response. And I show her my response, and I say to her, there you go, help yourself. I've got nothing to hide. It, that must be a bit of a, a breath of fresh air for you as well, to finally be free of the shame and the hidden, you know, secrets. Yes, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like you say, I carried that myself, you know. I, nobody knew about this apart from myself. And that was like, I, I felt like the saint, secrets, you know, secret society. It was, it, was, it was nice to feel that way, in a sense. But then as time went on, I realised I was just a, a paddy wagon form to carry on to the next guy come along. And then, realistically, it was like, well, actually, I, what do I get out of this, you know? But at the same time... It, I'm still going to get that attention. And I still have friends that are females, that are friends of mine. I think the worst bit for me is the married women. The married women that come up to me and send me pictures or ask me to go out, and I'm like, so what, what's your husband going to be doing? Well, he, 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 no, we don't say... One, I'm not going to be like I said to you before, I'm not going to be the reason for destroying someone's marriage. I've been there, and I'm not that person. I couldn't do it to my worst enemy. I wouldn't want that for anybody. I know how it feels. Two, I have got some morals. You know what I mean? I don't think that's right while a man's at work working his ass off for me to go around and service his missus and smile all the way at the bank. That's not right in my eyes. Mm -hmm. So I give him the simple advice, be honest with your husband. Tell him what you want to do. If you're getting bored in the sexual side of things, then either accept it or move on or do something about it. Now, if he, your husband wants to sit there and watch, then by all means. But he has to be included and he has to know about this. Do, gone, blocked. Mm -hmm. Other side of things, they'll come to their place and I'll look at them face to face and I'll say to them, trust me, from my experience, it's not worth it. So are you still massaging yes. people? Yes. Yeah. But it's purely non-sexual now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, I've got clients that I've had for years, so to speak, and... But, you so know. your girlfriend's okay with that, though? Yeah, she's okay with the, the massage side of things. And like I said, you know, it, it, it's a case of, I'm not going to say never, because, you know, I mean, the girl I'm with at the moment, we, we don't even class ourselves as girlfriend and boyfriend. We're there for each other. We're our best, we're best friends, you know? She's got my back when it comes to kids, and I've got her back when it comes to everything, and there is a lot of love there. It's, it's, it's mutual understanding. And I've already told her, straight to her face, that if the book does its thing and I get an offer that's going to change my life for my children's benefit, I'm going to take it. Mm. Because I'd be stupid not to. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Brian, the way I see it is, there's only one sure thing about this life. So in the meantime, just don't, don't stress yourself. Mm. Don't worry about it. Because you're only going to end up in one place. And what is today's newspaper is going to be yesterday's chip paper in it or the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and how long have you had some of these clients for now at this point? Oh, God. Yeah, long, long time. A long, long time. I, I, I think a couple of the clients that I see... When I travel around and stuff in certain places of the company, I've, I've known them 
while the book was going and while I was doing what I was doing, <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, that's the thing. Um, and a lot of them come so close to me. The fact that, you know, if they have a problem in their life, like, you know, finance or something, they, they ring me. And I'll have a chat with them for 10 minutes and they go, you know what, I don't care, you're right. And I'll suffer and I'll come along. Come on, you'll be all right, keep the faith, you'll be all right. And you know, I kind of find myself reinforcing it all the while. And mm. like you say, when, when you get into a certain stage in life where you've wrote a book or you're in the public eye, people listen to you and they kind of, so you, you think, well, actually, I don't want to give you rubbish advice, but let's just look at this. There's always two sides to every story. There's the truth and not the truth. And who's telling it? You know what you know what I'm saying, don't you? So in my eyes, what I do to every problem anyone's got is let's look at look at the truth. Let's look at what you have got to start off with. Okay, you're a bit rocky on this. And that seemed to make them feel better. So I'm kind of relied on as well as that figure that keeps them calm and keeps you're doing all right, you're doing fine, everything's fine. You're in exactly the place where you're meant to be. Don't try to live, just live. That's the secret of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So for me, even this today is like, well, didn't expect it, but it's great. It's mm -hmm. bit, I've met a really nice, really nice people. You guys are awesome. I tell you. Oh, thank you so much. And um, I think we'll 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 end that there. But um, thanks so much for coming, mate. No, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity massively. And I I, I hope things go great for you. Obviously, you've got another book coming out. Um, what will that one be called? Do you know? That's a good question. Yeah, I'd probably Gigolo 2. <laughs> that I, makes sense. Well, I was going to call it uh, Gigolo 2, What a Woman Truly Desires, because I've spent so many years trying to understand what a woman really wants. And, you know, when you click on what, what a woman really wants, you've, you've got it. You know? Have you seen the Mel Gibson movie? Yes. Where he has the electric shock and you can hear women. That's what, what they think. Exactly. <laughs> I'm thinking you know? of that. Exactly. And obviously, <clears throat> I worked with women all my life. Mm -hmm. You know, in the industries that I worked in, I was the only male. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> as a therapist, it was all women, all women, all yeah. women. I was the only male. And I, 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 you see the true side of any day. They're, you know, without going on too much, you know, they all have their problems and issues. But some of the conversations I listen to, I go, oh my God, that's not even make me gip. Yeah. You know, I can't, I wouldn't do that. That's disgusting. <laughs> but there's me saying that. Well, I'll leave you on my last question that I ask a lot of people, which is, how would you like to be remembered? How would I like to be remembered? Do you know what? A good father is top of my list. Um, and, and a good friend, somebody that is always there for someone. I'm the kind of guy that if you ring me, I'll be there. Don't matter where you are in the world, I'll be there. I am the guy that you can rely on if you need it. And the extension goes out to all my friends and family, they'll tell you the same thing. Um, so I'd like to be remembered as a nice guy, um, but also good in bed. <laughs> fantastic do you know what I mean yeah, I mean I think you've nailed that <laughs> on the gravestone he was good in bed he's a good yeah. shag um, there'd be all these ticks on there for these. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> well um, if you want to purchase the book guys you already know it's uh, Gigolo uh, it's out in stores and Gigolo 2 will be on possibly, the way possibly. Um, and thanks for sharing your story mate I really appreciate Ben Foster My on pleasure. the Jody Podcast thank you thank you cheers <laughs>